Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, you guys know by the title that we are going to be reviewing the Dior saddlebag. So if you guys are interested to see what I think, then just keep watching. Alrighty guys, so obviously we're going to start with the general overview of this bag. So obviously I do have the warm taupe shade and this color is actually still available. It was seasonal and then it was non-stop out of sock and then... I saw on the website that they actually do still have this bag so if you guys are looking for this color it is still available so this is obviously the regular size not the mini size you can see it. this is the front looks like this is the back and the back does have a back pocket and I'll show you um, whether or not my phone can fit in this back pocket obviously you have the CD hardware on both sides the strap is also grain calfskin as well so the material on this bag and this part are exactly the same and then obviously you have the D on the bottom and then this is the inside of the bag the opening and then there is one little zip pouch on the inside but that's about it in terms of compartments it just has this zip bit right over here and to be honest i don't really use this zipper area as much just because it's really tight on the inside but it is nice to have options if you want to put cash or maybe like valet cards or stuff like that and then this is the bottom of the bag so the bottom is split like this if you guys I've never seen the bottom of a saddlebag. I'm so sorry you can hear Dior downstairs. She's like, oh, she's doing a Dior review. So this is the bottom of the bag. So yeah, this is the bag. Just a quick little general overview of the saddlebag. Alrighty, so next we're going to be talking about price point of this bag. So this bag is quite expensive. This bag does retail for $3,800. It honestly doesn't matter whether or not you get the grain calfskin or just the regular oblique. It actually is just $3,800. However, if you get their limited edition ones, every single collection they have, if they have specialty ones, especially the ones with like the multicolored butterfly or the ones with the cheetah print and stuff like that, those ones in general are about like $400 to $500 more expensive give or take which one you do get and then also just something to consider in terms of price point i know a lot of people including myself when you plan to get a saddlebag you kind of include the price of the additional straps that a lot of people like the only reason why i didn't buy a strap for mine which i had full intention to buy one is that because my shade is warm taupe the straps that were available didn't really go with it if you get the black one or any of the navy blue options then for sure you're going to have tons of choices or even the white one but because mine is warm Warm taupe they didn't have any warm taupey accented straps so i did not buy one but again like i said going towards price point so thirty eight hundred dollars plus the strap which ranges from a thousand dollars to let's just say thirteen hundred dollars around there so you'd be essentially paying for let's just round up like five thousand dollars for the whole kind of set so that's just something to take into account because i know a lot of people when they look at the saddlebag they want to add the additional strap to it and and I eventually do want to get a strap for mine it's just I have not come across a color combo that would go with this shade of warm taupe so okay guys so probably everyone's most favorite part is what fits inside of this bag because I know especially with the way that this is structured right here a lot of people feel like you can't fit a lot and you can't fit a lot you really buy this more for the aesthetic vibe not really oh my gosh like this could be my throw everything in bag that is not what this bag is but let me just show you all the things that I was carrying earlier okay ready so we first have my Dior Amour card holder. Usually when I use a bag like this, I do like to go for like a thinner card holder just because there's not as much space. I have obviously a mask and then these are actually my new keys. I just want to show you guys this really quick because I'm so proud of it. Um, I don't know if you guys like BTS. I'm honestly not even a real BTS fan. I'm a fake BTS fan and you'll see me buying this in the next vlog that's probably going up. If you guys like Jungkook, look how cute this is. It says JK on his thing and then the lanyard even has his face on it. But anyways, it's not the point. So this has my car key so I, and my AirPods. So I'm going to stuff this in. I actually like to put my mask last. I don't know why I put it first. Let me just take this out for a second. And then I have this Smorga. Oh, actually, this is a Zoomy one. When you order stuff from Zoomy, they give you this little pouch thing. So I put kind of like my membership cards in here, like Bloomingdale's, Dog Bakery, stuff like that. I also have a coin pouch, which is the shape of a melon. I bought this in Japan like years ago. I also have a mini travel size tan lotion. And then I always carry around my purse clip. So you put this 
this on the table and clip it and then here is my phone and in all honesty i actually put the phone in the back pocket which i will show you and let me just see what else i can fit in here i've been watching a lot of what's in my bags and i noticed a lot of celebrities carry around essential oils so I have two of them. I have one from Aveda. It's the blue oil balancing one. It's to help concentrate. I don't know if that really works. And then I have this one because I've been coughing a little bit. This is the one from, I don't think it's pronounced sage. Is it sahe? I have no idea. But I have one for coughing that I use for my throat. I want to put both of those in here so you guys can see it's actually pretty filled. Should I just see if this fits? So my phone still does fit and it does close. And then here we have it. But in all honesty, in general, I do not... Put my phone in here it's just not because i'm always on my phone i actually put my phone in the back so i don't have the max i do just have the 12 pro just the regular one and this is honestly how i hold it like this i feel like if you didn't have a pop socket for your iphone you could probably fit it better if you guys do have the iphone max which i feel like a lot of you guys do have it will fit in here just because the what is it the width of the phone is still the same but for sure i'm gonna assume that it would probably stick out more but in general you're holding your bag like this anyway so i don't think it really matters whether or not the phone sticks out from the back but yes you can actually fit in a good amount for people that like to document things oh i'm using my camera right now what can i show you that's kind of thick okay let me just grab a couple more things just so you can kind of have an idea of whether or not it fits inside of this okay i know some people just like to carry random stuff in here so i just grabbed for example, if you're the type of person that always wears sunglasses, that is not me because I need to see. This is a sunglass, I mean a glasses case. Just to give you an example, this is just your like typical boxy one. That it does fit in here, but you probably would have to not fit other things. So do you see how it fits? You can still put in like your card holder. I could probably fit in a bottle, a mini bottle of hand sanitizer. And then I'm sure I can still fit my keys in here as well. And then like I said, this can close and then I would most likely than not still keep my phone in the back of this pocket These are just little things that because everyone carries different things with them Not everybody carries everything and not everybody carries the same things I also have this little wet brush because some people like to carry a hairbrush with them and the hairbrush This obviously is a travel size version does fit in here <laughs> So those are just random things that you guys can fit in your DR saddlebag because I know the shape is very oblong and strange But yes Alrighty, let's discuss the pros and cons about this bag relatively quickly. So a con about this bag is definitely uh, what fits in it. Obviously, you cannot fit a lot in here, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's a really true con. It's like if I bought a micro bag and a, a con wouldn't be that I can't fit a lot because you're, you, <laughs> you know what it looks like and the size of it. So that would be like a yes and no con for me it's not a real con but i do know some people might be bothered by it just really quick for example with the mini saddlebag a lot of people that one's really really popular the mini one in the black and brown and also what is it the oblique i feel like are extremely popular and i've seen so many videos on the mini one because the mini one is super cute and the number one complaint that people have with the mini saddlebag is that it basically can't fit anything a lot of people have been complained that it can't even fit a phone but you are buying a mini saddlebag the shape like you're buying it for more like the fashion aesthetic not really to put things in i think a big big con with the saddlebag is the price in all honesty when this first came back i think this actually the saddlebag came back in mm, maybe i think it came back maybe like 10 years ago i remember right when it came out i honestly really didn't like it which i guess the con is the shape it's very oblong it's a very unique bag whether or not that's a con to you i know it's a con to some people is that like it's just it's very specific on what this looks like for example a just regular size crossbody bag let's say the gucci soho disco bag that that aesthetic of that bag is very easy to style whereas the saddlebag no matter what color you really get the style is very unique so that could be a con to some people that you can't really match it with everything so to speak even if you had it in black yes the black can go with a lot of things but the style and design in it of itself isn't really like oh you can you can take this with everything if that makes sense but again that's really just to each their own personal style but going back to what i was saying is when this bag first came back i honestly thought this bag was so ridiculously overpriced i think when it came back it was like 2600 dollars uh, like 26 28 it definitely wasn't 3000 yet but it 
it was like $2,600. I'm leaning towards that. I'll try to find the exact price it was when it came back. But yeah, at that time, I wanted it. But I was like, that's just, that's real ballsy expensive. And I just kept pushing it back, pushing it back. But obviously, I knew I still wanted it just because it's the Dior saddlebag. Like, how can you not have a Dior saddlebag? You know what I mean? Just really the hardware is really what cinches you. Other than that, honestly, I don't really feel like there's that many cons to this bag. In my personal experience, um, I've had this bag for, I bought this, basically I got it for my birthday. So since August, maybe like five months, I guess it is January. It's about five to six months I've had this bag. Okay, so one of the pros that I would like to point out is, so I did get the grained calfskin. Here is just a quick close-up. You guys can see the grain in this. If you don't have your setting on the YouTube video for, um, picture higher quality i do recommend turning it on right now just so you can kind of see the grayness of here it's kind of shiny in a way can you like see the reflection of the light hitting it so why this is a pro is because even just something small so i was drinking starbucks actually earlier today and the outside of the cup started getting condensation obviously and it started to drip on my back because the bag was sitting in my lap while i was drinking the coffee so the outside of it dripped and it dripped on this bag and i didn't even panic because that's happened to me before so what I'm saying about a pro is that I don't actually have to baby this bag. Again, it is because of the material too. If you have the oblique canvas, it might be a different story. But if I get water on this, I literally just wiped it away with my finger. I didn't even use like my sleeve or anything. I wiped it away with my finger. There is no residue at all on this bag. Again, it might be different if you drop like Thai tea because Thai tea is really orange or if you did soda it might be a different story but if it was like water or just something really light I just wiped it away and there is no watermarks no residue no nothing so I definitely think it has to do with the material and how they just finished it so that's just like a plus if you ever get water on this or if you're using this in the rain I don't have to worry about it for example if you're using a Louis Vuitton bag when it's raining you think to yourself oh no there's a on this bag like I have to hide it from the rain whereas this if it's sprinkling or something i really don't have to worry about this at all another pro is i mean i don't know if this counts as a pro but the aesthetic vibe this hardware piece right here i'm just absolutely obsessed with i think it's the cutest thing when you're holding it like this and you can see it from the front and you can see it from the back as well to me that's just really like ooh, i just i love that about the bag another pro is actually i feel like this is debatable but because this is a magnetic closure to me it's actually pretty easy to get in and out of so to speak it's not as easy as let's say mm, like my celine nano bag i don't think it's that easy because obviously again the shape is a bit awkward but because it's magnetic do you see that where it just closes very securely okay let's go back to this really quick is that to use it though functionality wise it isn't that easy to use okay so let me just get that out of the way to me it's easy because it's a flap like this as opposed to let's say certain bags have like a buck or you have to twist something to get out of it not saying it's that hard but it's just to me it's pretty easy but some other people could argue that this bag is not easy to get in and out of because of the opening right here is do you guys see this how the opening is not fully wide due to obvious reasons oh i left the brush in here so you guys could argue whether or not this could be easy to get in and out of i know a lot of people talk about with the bobby bag how the opening of that is a con for a lot of people where it's like that that sort of shape makes it hard to get in and out of i think in terms of this opening it's more of like a personal preference it's not the easiest thing because obviously this is not a tote bag i can't just chuck things in here i really have to strategically kind of place things in however it's not that complicated and it's not that big of a deal for me like it fits what it needs to fit and it's shaped like this so you can't assume that everything's gonna be that easy I don't know if you guys would count this as a complete pro, but I like that you're able to style this in different ways. And what I mean by that is, is that you have the option to add various different types of straps. They have the thinner ones, they have the wide ones, they have the ones with the kind of like metal hardware on it. It's just, I feel like with the strap and without the strap, it can just give a completely different vibe because not a lot of bags you can match with like two or three different types of straps. And then another pro about the Dior saddlebags is that you can get this in so many different colors, finishes. They have this in so many different iterations of Dior Oblique. So if there's a color that you don't like right now, I honestly say just wait it out. Like don't settle because this is very expensive. Don't settle for a color you're just kind of okay about. Especially with this type of bag, the shape of it. It's just 
you need to really love the color that you're gonna pick because it's like look at the shape it's not a normal designed bag you gotta really like love it so i say just wait they always have different shades of browns like they have like the pumpkiny orange brown they have the cognac browns uh they have like different shades of greens yellows reds even like pinks so i say if there's not a color that you absolutely love in a door i say just wait on it because i'm sure it's gonna come up or if you want it in the dior oblique print just wait too because they come out with really like sick sick colors and i guess my last little pro would definitely be the hardware on this and going back to it it's not just the aesthetic if you see the hardware it's kind of like this rusted gold finish which i like about this because for me i've had this back for again only like six months or so but i have no scratches on my hardware for example if this was champagne gold or just shiny gold hardware i feel like it would pick up scratches a lot quicker whereas because it's already Already kind of aged hardware aged gold hardware i feel like you can't really see the damage that happens to it just because of the already like agedness of it if that makes sense so you also don't really have to worry about like touching this or scratching it and stuff like that which i think is super super convenient also guys really quick i did want to show you guys kind of the drop length i feel like the prada re-edition is a bag that a lot of people have just so you guys can kind of see okay do you see this so the prada re-edition hold on actually let's do it like this so if you guys can see the Prada re-edition actually is a little bit longer in terms of drop length than the saddlebag so what drop length is if you guys don't know it's basically from the top of the strap down to the bottom of the bag so do you see this length you can just see right here because this strap length whereas this part from this to this is a lot lower there's what like two and a half inches of more space on the Prada re-edition than there is on the saddlebag so what that means is that when you carry do you see how my elbow easily goes into this like it scoops into it like that so this is very comfortable as a over-the-shoulder bag like this whereas this one since the drop length is a little bit shorter so you see how my elbow goes into it like this my elbow does not <laughs> go into this bag so if you have either like long arms or just something just letting you know that this isn't as easy to use as this one is which again like i said could be a con to some people for me this is very comfortable you just kind of have to take a little bit of effort and use two hands and just put it in like this but to me it is still comfortable but some people might have an issue because this strap is not adjustable so that could be a con for some people which is totally understandable for me it's comfortable there is still a little bit of space right here but if your arm is a little bit bigger um it might be a little bit tighter for you so which i recommend if you still really like the bag to get the adjustable strap or to just try it on in store and see how you feel like putting it in and out like this like how comfortable that is for you and then probably just the last little like fun fact i actually asked my drsa what is the proper way to wear the saddlebag obviously you can wear this bag any way you want to but technically the correct way is to have the shorter end of the tail be the side that's sticking out so this is a more right-sided bag if that makes sense obviously you can wear this on the left if you are left-handed or anything like that like that's fine but the proper way is to wear it with the short end of the butt sticking out like this and i do find the sh having the short end of the butt is a little bit more comfortable and then just to show you too for example if you do want to grab something you totally can like i know that a lot of people say with the mini saddlebag that you if you want to grab something out of the mini saddlebag and you have it on your arm like this you actually have to physically take it off your arm first and then rummage through it whereas this bag even though it's on my arm let me just show you an example i'm gonna take put my wallet in here literally i can just grab it hold on where's my card holder and then so i don't necessarily have to take my purse off just to get my wallet out or whatever i need okay lastly do i think this bag is worth it i'm gonna say yes and no which i know is a very annoying answer but just hear me out so i'm gonna say no let's just say with the hypothetical 10 percent price increase we're gonna jump this puppy up with tax to like a 47 hundred dollar bag i do not think this bag is worth 47 hundred dollars if you're buying it for like an everyday bag if that's the mentality however i do think this bag is worth it in terms of you want the dior saddlebag because it's the iconic dior saddlebag you want to like wear it with the hardware you plan to like wear it with 
multiple things because this can go from day to night i don't think this bag is that like everyday friendly but at the same time i feel like this bag isn't necessarily just a date night or nighttime bag i use this so much just to go get lunch or even honestly i don't use this as a grocery running errands bag but if i already had stuff in this and i need to pop by the grocery store really quick i could so easily just use this bag to go grab like buy a bottle of wine or something or like some cheese i don't know why i got really fancy i can buy a bag of chips too but it's just because this bag is so carefree i just feel like i can use this in so many different not even occasions just situations if i want to go to k-town and get korean barbecue i don't really have to worry about this bag whereas for example my chanel mini rectangular tweed bag i do not wear that bag everywhere that is for damn sure but yeah the material of this just because even getting like pit pocketed i'm not afraid because the opening on this is so tight and if i'm using this bag my arm is literally like this like for somebody to pit pocket me wearing this bag you got to cut off the strap and physically steal this entire purse to pit pocket me because like my arm is like protected not even on purpose it's just the way you carry this bag to me this bag is worth it for what it kind of stands for would i push this down a little bit yes i don't think this bag needs to be like forty five hundred dollars for sure but considering how iconic it is if it's just something for you that's a really special piece and you want to add it to your collection i think it can be worth it just because the actual bag itself is easy to use to a certain degree i know a lot of people cr criticize it and say it's actually kind of fussy it's it's not that it's fussy it's just not as easily accessible as for example we're just going to use like the gucci soho disco bag you just zip it put stuff in put stuff out then it's fine but that just goes with the design of the bag i'm not buying this bag to have it be that easy i'm buying it for the design so just take that with a grain of salt Alrighty guys, we have come to the end of today's review. If you guys have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I will totally get back to you guys as soon as possible. Again, I have only had this bag for about like six months or so, so I wouldn't say I'm a Dior saddlebag expert, but I'll try to be as helpful as I can. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's bag review video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps support my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!